let me mute everyone really fast. Hey, I'm just um, inviting all the people that I told the other link. Okay. No, you're fine. And we're going to have a, a cap. So if I would just message everyone you know and try to get them on, everybody. Um, otherwise, they're just going to have to catch the recording. So let me unmute Bonnie. So I'll give everybody, please, if you have coaches in the Entrepreneur Academy, please tag them. Let them know on that post that it's now moved to Zoom and we're not doing a YouTube Live anymore. I'm apparently not 21 and a very easy learner anymore, and that was hard as crap to figure out. So I gave up on YouTube Live. YouTube Live. So make sure you tag everybody and get them on here. I'm pretty sure I have like a hundred or two hundred person limit. So, um, everybody's a little bit. Of time. You're like a fast typer. It's like. I think it's just the sound because I'm really not. <laughs> like ninja fingers. Okay. Luckily we have the chat on Zoom also. So if you guys do have questions, which hopefully you do, um, Bonnie and I will probably go back and forth for probably like, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes maybe, and then open it up for questions at the end if you guys do have questions about what we cover. Going to I want to apologize in advance because I have my puppy in my office with me and she she likes to eat and bark at every in inanimate object in the room. What's her name? Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's funny. Okay. All right, we still have people rolling in, but for the sake of everyone's time, we will go ahead and get started and dig in. Everybody can hear me okay? Perfect. Let me try to mute everybody one more time just in case. No, you could. No. Okay. All right, welcome to your Monday of Entrepreneur Academy 2. This entire week we are going to talk about recruiting and so we thought we would kick it off um, by having obviously one of the best recruiters in the business um, along with myself talk about recruiting and what that looks like for us and how it's kind of changed. I think that as new coaches, the way we recruited and, and what that looks like is a lot different than what it looks like now. And so hopefully we'll be able to kind of cover both of those and, and maybe just give you guys some tips on, you know, how to do it best, um, you know, and really get the most out of social media and what you're doing every single day. So I will go ahead and start. Um, introduce myself. I am Raina Odell. I am a superstar diamond coach, 15 star diamond coach, uh, two-time elite, top 10 2015. And I have been a coach since April 2013. So just over three years I've been coaching. And I started um, really strong straight out of the gate. I hit Emerald rank very quickly. Um, I asked my coach Leslie what I had to do to be successful and she's told me to rank advance and hit success club. And so I was one of those coaches who were like, okay, I'll do that. Um, simple. Like, tell me what to do exactly. I will do it. And so I started, oh, lots of echo. Hold on. I'm probably going to have to keep muting people. Um, so I signed up my husband. I signed up my mother-in-law. And I was like, bam, I'm Emerald. Like, give me all the recognition and all the prizes. I'll take it. And from there, she, I, I, you know, what's next? I, and she told me diamond. Usually people skip ruby, so she didn't even bring up that you could hit a ruby rank. To me and so I shot for diamond and I messaged about 50 people in my phone who I knew had anything to do with health and fitness whether they were runners or they ate healthy or you know whatever the case maybe I messaged every single one of them and I, I mentioned this opportunity to them now some of them signed up probably like three out of the 50 actually signed up 
Um, you know, 40 out of the 50 probably said no. And then the rest were just seeds planted and they had it in the back of their mind and they were thinking about it. And it was something I, I brought up later on. So I just focused on planting those seeds straight out of the gate. Now I hit diamond, I hit diamond in 63 days. And a fact, a fun fact is that most all of the people actually that got me to diamond aren't even coaches anymore other than my husband and mother-in-law. So don't think that once you get to diamond, you just stop, right? You are constantly going to have to be bringing new people on because the same people that get you to a, your first goal to Emerald to diamond to star diamond even might not be the same people that you have long-term for this business. So have that recruiting mindset, have that mindset of always needing to bring people on because they're not going to stick around because Honest, honestly, a lot of people aren't going to see the value in this business like you do. They're not going to have the same passion in this business like you do. They're not going to be willing to work as hard as you do or devote the time that you do. So you have to constantly be in this mindset of bringing new people on, these like-minded people who are ready to roll just like you are, okay? So I hit diamond really quickly, and then I, I think everybody knows this, but I'll say it anyway just in case, but I, I was a diamond for nine months. I, I plateaued for nine months in this business because somebody's taking a picture. Hi, Ashley. I was like, I see a camera, like I should pose and make a pretty face. You see sometimes like you have coaches who share these pictures where they're like on a team call and I'm like, you know, or some awkward looking face, it's terrible. So thank you. Um, but I was plateaued for nine months in this business. So I got to a point where I wasn't growing. I wasn't talking to as many people anymore. I had that group of, you know, 12, 15 coaches that got me to diamond and I was investing everything I had into those people to grow them because I wanted it so bad for them. But the truth is they didn't want it as bad as I wanted it for them. They weren't able to push the way I wanted them to push. They weren't able to rank advance or hit success club because it wasn't a priority to them. So I, again, plateaued for a long time until I had this switch in mindset where I was like, you know what? I just have to bring on new people. I, the growth in this business is not based on what I do as much as it is what my team does. And so I had to have that mindset of bringing on new people, of training them up correctly, and really just always looking for more like-minded people. So when I plateaued, I again had this mindset change. I was talking to someone from corporate and I was telling them, you know, I want to be top 10. I want to do all these things. I want to, you know, grow my business. I want to have a ton of people and things like that. And they say, okay, well, how many are, how many people are you recruiting right now? And at that time as a diamond coach, I was probably recruiting maybe five people a month, five to eight people a month. And he kind of looked at me like, well, Top 10, you have to get more people than that, right? Top 10 at that point, I think I had to recruit like 20 to 25 coaches a month. And I was like, come again? Like 20 to 25 people a month from five? Okay. And again, I'm that coach where I'm like, okay, tell me what to do and I'll do it. And so I had that in my head that I needed more people. And Brett and I sat down and discussed our goals and wanting to shoot for, you know, and, and, and if top 10 is not your goal, it doesn't have to be, but whatever your goal is, the answer is more people, a hundred percent. So whatever your goal is, you just need more people. So Brett helped to me figure out like, okay, what am I doing now? And what are we not doing to get that number of people that I need to be talking to every single month or get that number of people that I need to be recruiting every single month. And it was simply just not talking to enough people, not getting this opportunity in front of enough people every single day. Okay. So I changed it. I changed it. And so I'm going to go through just some things and then Bonnie's going to cover some things about, I'm going to cover what I changed, what that mindset shift looked like. Um, and I know Bonnie has some amazing tips for you. So I'll just, do you just want to go back and forth tip wise, <laughs> I guess, or do you want to share something, Bonnie, or are you, you good? We just want to dive in. Um, okay. Okay. I didn't think I could. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about, first of all, the mindset of recruiting, because like, much like Raina, we kind of have similar stories in the beginning of the business. I'm definitely the type of person where if you tell me what to do, I will do it. Um, and that is the kind of mindset in this business that I think is the most successful. I think where people kind of undermine their own business or their own success is when they start to overthink things. I think that if you are on this call, you have an incredible upline and whatever they tell you to do, you should do. <laughs> um, but 
I do know that a lot of recruiting has to do with mindset. And in the beginning of my business, when I was told to recruit people, I was like, well, that seems really icky. You know, recruiting equals network marketing equals a really icky feeling equals I don't want to do it. And I think a lot of times in the beginning of the business, that's what we can attribute recruiting to. You know, people tell us we have to recruit and then all of a sudden I hear people saying, well, that's not what I love about the business or that's not where I want to focus or Betty, no, or that's, you know, that takes the joy out of my business or whatever the case. But I want you guys to kind of have a mind switch about it. And I want you to think about it in a different way. So when I uh, lived in New York with my husband and I worked in the corporate world, I was actually working with several recruiters. So I did corporate medical marketing, which I know is like completely different than what I do now. Um, but in New York, a recruiter is an actual full-time, everybody wants one job. A recruiter is somebody who finds you a corporate job in New York City. Um, there are a million, there are a dime a dozen, and they're hard to come by. Um, so a recruiter is somebody who literally goes out and finds people for those positions and headhunts them for these positions. When you got a message on LinkedIn from a recruiter, it was a happy thing. These people were telling you, you are desirable for this position. You would be good at this position. This is how much you could make. These are the possibilities. Would you be interested? And when I first started thought about recruiting in this business, I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And then I started to think about, Betty, enough. And then I started to think about, you know, what I felt like when I would get those messages from recruiters. What would, what, would, what would the feelings be like when somebody told me you'd be good at this job and this could answer, you know, all of these questions that you had in your life. This could answer income. This could an answer happiness. This could answer a problem that you have. And then I started to think, oh my gosh, I've been going about recruiting all wrong. I will tell you this, you guys, whatever you think in conversations is what the person listening to you feels. So if you're going into a conversation about this business thinking, oh my gosh, I, I hope they'll say yes. I don't know what they'll think. I mean, it kind of works. It's kind of okay. I'm almost a diamond. That's what that person is feeling, whether you say that or not. Whatever feeling you have in your head that comes across in messages. So mindset is so, so, so important with recruiting. That is number one. If you feel <laughs> weird. Oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. If you feel weird about recruiting, if you feel a negative feeling about recruiting, you have to change that because that is coming across in your messages. I did something the other day and I told my team about this where I literally invited about, I think it was 800, I sent 800 emails from Gmail. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Gmail has a limit on the amount of emails that you can send and it's 800. And I was sending all these follow-up emails, inviting them to a sneak peek. And I got this message from Gmail that said, you can no longer send an email. So I invited 800 people from the beginning of when I started coaching to the coaching opportunity. And those are from the beginning of my business follow-ups. So that should tell you a couple things. Number one, no one that ever says no to what you say is off your list, right? If I invite somebody in the beginning of my business and I say something totally whack, and I feel uncomfortable about it, that's okay. I go back to them and say, you know what, that was at the beginning of my business and I really had no idea what I was talking about, but I've been doing this now for two years and I've gotten pretty good at it. So if you wanna to touch base again, I know you've been following me. I cannot tell you how many people I have sign up a year, two years later, six months later, however long. So whatever mindset you have, whatever confidence level you need to get to, to feel that way when you're talking to people, you need to do the actual work to get there because mindset is so key in recruiting. And then the second thing that I really want to touch on that I think this is the second most important thing. You absolutely, if you want to recruit people, you absolutely 100% have to match what you're saying in private, in public. If you are inviting people to coaching in private and sending a ton of messages about the business and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. I can recruit challengers all day. I can get people in my challenge groups, but I can't recruit them to be coaches. It's because what you're saying in private is not matching what you're saying in public. I can tell you what happens when you message someone about coaching. As soon as you start talking to them, the first thing they do is go right to your public profile page, right to your Facebook page. If I went to your Facebook page right now, you invited me to coaching, what would I think? Would I know that it adds value to your life? Would I know that you do it every single day? Would I know the vision of where you're going? Would I know what it would give me? In three scrolls of a mouse, that is it. 
That's the attention span that people have, and those are the times that we live in. We are living in a very Snapchat-driven society where people can't even sit and focus for eight seconds on a piece of somebody's story, okay? I find myself clicking through them quicker than they actually go, and it drives me insane about myself, but that's where our focus is going. So you have to think about it. If somebody's attention span is only that quick, then they are not going to go digging on your Facebook page for the coaching post that you did three weeks ago or the income post that you did three months ago that you're scared to do again, right? These things have to be present on your Facebook page at all times with three scrolls of a mouse. Your Facebook page is the area where people are going to come to research you. So say you invite someone today and you say, you know what, I've really been thinking about you, you know, don't overthink it, nothing weird. I've really been thinking about you in the business and I think that you'd be amazing at this. The first thing that person does before they even answer you back is goes right to your Facebook profile page and they scroll three times or three little things like this on their iPhone because the majority of Facebook users are on their iPhone. <laughs> O M G. She's she's barking at my chair. Ready? Okay. The majority of Facebook users are on their iPhones. So I want you to do this. When you guys get off this call, one of the action items that I'm gonna give you is to go to your Facebook page and do that three times. And I want you to think about what you feel or what you learn or what answers you get from those three scrolls say look at it really objectively say you were the person that were, was just invited to beach body coaching and try to put yourself in that position that you were in when you were thinking about joining when your coach approached you or when you first found beach body coaching what were the questions you had what were the objections you had did you think it was a pyramid scheme did you think it was going to cost too much money those are the things that you need to post directly about every single day. So this is another little nugget that um, I, if I could give you one piece of information, this is what changed my business. So I don't know if you guys know this story, but um, last year I went from a two star diamond to a 15 star diamond in one year. And this is what I changed. So you'll hear a lot of coaches say, to do an 80-20 on your Facebook page, right? So 80% you, 20% the business. I completely 100% disagree with that. I think it should be 100% about the business and what you do on your Facebook page. Now, by that, I do not mean this is how much I make, come and join my team, I have three spots open, um, kind of like spammy, like it worksy. That's not what I mean. I mean, every single post should be about what you do in some way, shape, or form, but it should have yourself in it, right? So if you don't know how to do that, or if you're struggling with that, this is my hundred, hundred um, kind of way that I do things. A hundred percent about the business and a hundred percent about you, right? So everything you post should have your picture on it, right? That makes it about you. That's not because you're a narcissist or you love the way you look in selfies. That's marketing 101, okay? Every single picture that you post has a purpose. Everybody makes a judgment on that picture. Everybody attaches your face or your body or your image with what you're talking about. I see somebody taking a picture. <laughs> um, that's just smart marketing, right? So if you guys can go to your Facebook page and not see yourself, that's something that you should switch. Um, and then if you guys, I want you to think about something. You know, we say... And this is the last thing I'll say before I'll toss it back to Raina so I can put my dog away. Um, you guys hear us talk a lot about consistency. If you're struggling with recruiting, it's because you're not consistent on your public Facebook page. I can guarantee you. If you're inviting people and they're ghosting on you and not answering you or having objections, it's because you're not answering them publicly. You're too afraid to post about what you're doing. You're not adding the value that the business gives you publicly. This is not a bad thing. I, when I think about the value that Beachbody has given me in my life, the business has changed my life. I, I cannot even explain how much has changed my life. I am so thankful to my sponsor every single day. And I know I have coaches on my team who feel the same exact way. And that's what I think about when I'm posting 
consistently. I don't care if someone thinks something about it. I don't care if there's people who get annoyed by it. I know that this business works. I know that it's real and good. And I know that it can change one person's life who's reading it or answer a question to that one person who I know has that question because I did in the beginning. So I want you to think about if you guys were to ha have scheduled a really big surgery, right? And you were trying to pick a doctor and they gave you, your insurance gave you a couple choices to choose from. And you researched the doctors and the one doctor you could find nowhere on the internet, right? There, you went to their page, there were no testimonials, there was nothing about what they do every day, you know, how happy the patients are afterwards, whatever. You went to this other doctor, there were pages and pages on Yelp, all of these testimonials, he had his picture up there, you could see what he looked like, you could get familiar with the offices. Which doctor would you choose? Obviously the one that you could find all the information about. So if you're not being consistent and creating that collateral on your page about your business, what the business gives you, what the business could give others, answering those questions, then you are doing yourself a really big disservice in your private messages. And when you start doing that, those messages become easier and easier. Right, Raina? She's wrong, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Go put your dog away. No. <laughs> Um, it's actually so true. And you guys, I think fear of putting yourself out there is one of the main things that causes so many coaches to fail in this business. I think that a lot of people are so wrapped up in what other people think and what my aunt Jemima <laughs> is going to say, or my uncle, or I don't know where I came up with that name, or, you know, just anybody like you guys have heard this before, but you cannot let the opinions of others determine your success. You cannot like who cares if someone gets offended by your selfies all day. You, I guarantee you Bonnie has haters every single day because of the selfies that she posts every single day, but you guys aren't going to see her stopping that or slowing down on that because she's built this business and it's successful because of what she posts every single day. And the same for to any other top coach that you follow, I guarantee you they are present every single day on social media and haven't stopped since the day they started. Okay. So again, don't let fear hold you back from anything that you're doing in this business. Do not. I have, I, when I was a coach, I started, I was 30 days in, I posted my 30 day progress pictures. I've shared this story before, but I had, uh, I was very involved in my church at the time, which I don't go to anymore. Um, but I was very involved in my church at the time. And I had, when I posted my 30 day progress pictures, I was in like a sports bra and like bikini bottoms, not like a thong or anything like that, but like full of butt bikini bottoms. And I had these women from my church go to my pastor and publicly bash me on Facebook and, and literally call me out publicly. I remember just bawling and thinking, is this for me? I don't know if I should continue to do this. Like all these emotions where most people would have quit. I decided to suck it up and be like, I can't cuss, but like, F that. Like, why would I let the thoughts of these women who clearly it's an issue with their, themselves that they're struggling with determine the success that I have in this business? And so from 30 day mark on, I literally had that mindset change where I was like, I don't care what other people think. I literally don't care what other people think. I'm going to post my pictures. I'm going to post selfies. I'm going to talk about this business that is at that time changing my life. I, I didn't have 30 days in this huge transformation physically or financially. Um, but I knew what this opportunity could do to my family and for me. So I, again, I pushed everyone else's opinions aside and I kept going every single day. Um, there's, I heard, I don't know where I heard it from, but they compared it to challenge groups. Recruiting and coaching is a lot like a challenge group. A lot of coaches go in or, or customers dive into a challenge group and they're all in, right? You guys are posting your workout pictures. Look at this health bet. Everybody's like crazy in the app, like posting your pictures, tracking your workouts, doing all these things. And then the second that you switch to being a coach, you throw all that out the window. All that consistency, all that hard work, all that dedication that you've learned in a challenge group, you then just, yeah, it's not the same when it comes to coaching and like you don't want to touch it, right? You have to take that same effort that you put into your health and fitness into coaching. You're not going to work out for a week and then eat cheeseburgers for three weeks and have results. Just like you're not going to recruit for a week and then not do shit for three weeks and have results. It's not going to happen. You have to be consistent and 
in this business and keep going no matter what, okay? So I'm gonna go through, I have like a few little wah, 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 posts uh, or little check marks or tabs or whatever you wanna call it. Um, things that I do and where I find people and things like that. So first and foremost, I, I want to talk about challenge groups, and I actually listened to the old call that Bonnie and I did from a year ago from the first Entrepreneur Academy, and I was listening just to the tips that I gave and things like that, and a year ago, I was like, I don't get anybody to challenge groups, and I just recruit everybody naturally, and like through coaching opportunity posts and sharing about the business and stuff like that, and then I, I looked over to my assistant as I was listening to that, and I was like, oh my God, how, how times have changed. I, at that point, didn't lead with fitness. I was not where I should have been in my own journey. I was not working out consistently. I was not drinking Shakeology consistently. So I didn't lead with fitness because that's not what I knew. Instead, I led with the business aspect of things, expecting people to jump in, get success club, rank advance, make money straight out of the gate without knowing anything about beach body in general, right? That was where I was then. Completely different now. You guys, I don't know if you followed me, but as of March, I just have been face first into health and fitness because that's what this is. That's what this business should be revolved around. You should be focused so much, first and foremost, on your own journey, your own transformation. If you are not, that's where you're failing. That's where you need to start. First and foremost, forget recruiting, forget challenge group, forget any of it. If you are not working out, drinking your Shakeology and doing your personal development, then you're already not doing what you should be as a coach. Okay. So I now lead with fitness first and foremost. Um, I have had my own transformation. So I'm able to post on social media platforms, share that transformation and get people who one, maybe are already in love with health and fitness, but want to try a different approach. Maybe what they're doing isn't working or maybe they just want in a, in a challenge group. And so right now, the majority of my people total opposite from what I said last year are coming from challenge groups because I'm leading with fitness. So I'm able to get them in, get them falling in love with fitness, get them falling in love with their programs, falling in love with Shakeology. And then a couple weeks into the group, I can come to them and say, Hey, you know, you're posting every day. You're super encouraging. I'm loving the transformation that you're having, not just physically, but mentally. Have you ever thought about coaching? Have you ever thought about doing what I do? Planning a seed. Again, this business is just about planting seeds all day, every day, okay? So going to that person halfway through a challenge group and being able to mention that opportunity to, hey, maybe you can take it a step further and maybe make some extra money or refer some people or have the extra accountability and even the discounts, right? So making sure you're leading with health and fitness, I think is a huge, probably my one and only tip that I want you to take away. <laughs> Not really, but take it away because super ridiculously important, okay? Our entire topic at Summit was fitness, right? Falling in love with fitness again, leading with fitness and keeping that first, and they're doing that for a reason. I feel like a lot of coaches are getting too far away from that and focusing on the business too much to where we're just losing who we are as a company, who we are as coaches leading with that health and fitness. So do that, okay? <laughs> do that. Um, Share your journey, you guys. I don't know that I would be where I am today if I hadn't have shared my journey every single day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, every year. I wouldn't be where I am. Being open, being vulnerable, sharing your journey, allowing people to connect with you because of your struggles, that's where you're going to get people who are like-minded, who are just like you, who want the same things out of life, is by being open and being vulnerable and sharing your story. Okay. So don't hesitate. Don't hold back from doing that. You have to also be relatable. I remember when we were in California, I just moved to California. I was like in this dip in the business where I was like, I'm not recruiting as many people. I'm like in tears. Like my life is falling apart. My business is falling apart. We all get in these funks where we think things aren't working. One, I wasn't doing personal development. So I switched that. But two, I had also stopped being relatable. Okay. I had literally just retired my husband. I had just moved my family across country to California. I was living in a house on the beach. I was posting beach pictures all the time. And to a normal person, 
that wasn't relatable. They saw that and they're like, oh my God, that'd be awesome. I'd love to have that life. But I stopped being relatable to people. I, it wasn't attainable right now. So I had to step back. I was literally in tears in my office talking to Brett and he literally just flat out said, Brandy, you're not relatable anymore. I was like, what are you talking about? Like I've done this and I've done that. And a lot of people are following me because they want this lifestyle and yada, yada, yada. And he said, Raina, think about where you are now and where you were as a new coach. What are you posting about now? And what are you posting about as a new coach? As a new coach, I had all that growth when I was posting about simple things like an extra hundred bucks a week or paying for a cart of groceries or being able to take my daughter to gymnastics or a tank of gas. Those kinds of things are more relatable to 99% of Facebook and Instagram than living on the beach, being, you know, paying like all that, you know, all that fancy stuff. Okay. It's so much more relatable to meet people where they are, not to show them, Hey, in 10 years, you can have this, but join my team and let's work for 10 years. They're not going to do that. Right. Right now people want accountability. They want to maybe help their family a little bit. They want help, help in their own journey. Those are the things you guys need to post about. I have a lot of people say, well, I work full time. I don't, you know, I don't have the freedom that you do to post and do all this and all that. That's an excuse. It, it's really just an excuse that you're making up to not have to work as hard. It really is. You have the time to work this business just like all of us do. I know that a lot of people in this group, a lot of people on this call, a lot of top coaches had full-time jobs when they started but they fit it in. There were late nights, there were early mornings, they did it, they got in front of people and they shared their story every single day. And I promise you, you're gonna be able to relate to people more by having a full-time job and getting your work out in and building a business on the side than I will sitting here doing it full-time, okay? Um, my second little point is doing coach opportunity posts. Um, it's part of, I think, sharing your journey. It's part of, again, like Bonnie said, doing those three scrolls and having people stop and see, I am actually a coach. I'm actually looking for people and this is a business. Um, I'm getting distracted by the chat. We'll go back and answer questions uh, at the end in a second, but doing coach opportunity posts. I'll share some in the group. Um, some examples. I have some screenshot. I kind of like I did the challenge group posts. I'll share some coach opportunity post samples with you guys. Um, but I mean, posting about sneak peeks, which we're going to run, Posting about, you know, again, the groceries, the gymnastics, all of these little things are great ways to pitch the opportunity as a coach without it being salesy and texts all over your pictures and things like that. Okay. Um, talking about the freedom you have with Beachbody. Again, a lot of you don't have that freedom built up yet, but share your goals with people. Share your six month goal, your one year goal. In five years, I want to be here. Be public with what you're doing and what you're looking to achieve every single time, okay? And then just talk to people. You guys have to get in front of people at every single opportunity. I was reading the Ask Gary V book, and it was either that one or the 10X rule, and he said, if you're not getting in front of people at every single opportunity, then you're not doing it right. Every single chance you have, you should be mentioning this opportunity. Just like your favorite restaurant, just like your favorite movie, just like your favorite Kylie lip gloss, share it. Every single chance you get, if it has benefited your life at all, even if it's just for the accountability, even if it's for, you know, your own journey or mentally you feel better as a coach or the accountability or the friendships or the relationship, whatever it is, share it because there's going to be other people out there that are looking for the same thing. You guys, this business is, I love the fitness. I love the accountability aspect, but the friendships, that's the, probably the most fun part about coaching those relationships that you're able to build. So talk about that. Talk about how they're joining this family of coaching where, yeah, you can probably make some extra money and have some accountability, but most women, most people like that relationship part of this, okay? Um, yeah, fitness first. I had fitness first really big on my thing again, so just do that, okay? <laughs> Okay, I want, to I want to touch on some of the things that Raina said. So, you know, it's so it's so weird how and creepy how much this business mirrors fitness, like every aspect of it. So, I want you to think about your business in the form of a workout program for a second. Say you had a customer who got twenty one day fix from you, three weeks long, right? 
and for three weeks they hit the gym and they did every single workout and they did their nutrition program and they got awesome results for three weeks, right? And then after three weeks, for the next three weeks, they completely threw everything out the window. They didn't do a single workout. They ate whatever they wanted because they were really good for three weeks. Do you think that they would hold those same results? Absolutely not. And when that customer came back to you and said, your program doesn't work. I did it for three weeks and then I didn't do it again and I didn't hold my results. That is exactly the same with your business, right? You cannot do the activities for three weeks and then take two weeks off and expect things to still be moving forward. The same is true with fitness. There's two parts to it, right? There's nutrition and there's working out. And if you do one and not the other, it doesn't work, right? And it works both ways. In your business, there's recruiting and there's workouts and fitness and challenge groups. It will not work unless you do both of those things. It's just like nutrition and fitness. You cannot outwork a bad nutrition plan and you cannot outwork not recruiting. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And there are so many ways to lead with fitness first, to still care about transformations, to still have your own. You guys, every piece of information that we get from top coaches from Beachbody, it says fitness first, but also fitness is such a cool way to kind of track your business as well. Just like Raina said, if your business is in a spot where it's kind of like stagnant or dipping down or whatever you want to say, it's probably because you aren't doing those things for yourself first. If you do those things for yourself first, I can almost guarantee you people will be coming to you because they'll want to know why you're so energetic. They'll want to know why you feel so good. What are you doing that's pushing you forward? And then secondarily, I want to touch on I talked a little bit about, you know, posting publicly about the things in the business or in fitness that are giving you value. And I saw a couple of questions that said, but how do I do that? I work full time or I do this or I do that. This is what I do every single month when the month starts. I have the same notebook that I've had since the beginning. It's from Marshall's. It was like $4.99. And every time I'm feeling like I'm, I don't have inspiration, I don't know what to post about coaching. I get out that notepad and I write a list of all of the things that I've been hearing from people, the objections, you know, what are they scared of? Um, you know, this week I've been getting a lot of, it's a pyramid scheme or a lot of, I don't have enough money. Or I think of the things that I was afraid of in the beginning. And then I do posts directly from those lists. So that does a couple things that makes it easier for me so that if I'm having a busy day, I don't need to come up with all these things on the, on the fly. I do not create schedules. People ask me this all the time, and I saw this question in the question bar. Even when I was super busy, you guys, I was working 16-hour days on top of coaching. I didn't make schedules. That's just a personality thing for me. My dream was to not be on a schedule and to not be on somebody else's time, so I don't make them. Um, I find that I'm much more creative when I fly by the seat of my pants, and my team will probably kill me because they thrive on schedules. So... What I would say to that is don't let that stop you. You know, if you're a schedule person, then write out a schedule. If you're not, cool. You could be successful either way. I think that people get kind of stuck behind that a lot of the times. And then I want to talk about, you know, this idea of that Raina touched on, posting about the successes of coaching. It's so funny because in the beginning, when coaches say, oh, I, I don't have enough success. Oh, sorry. I still hear something. Better? Okay. So coaches who are scared to post about coaching or trepidatious about it, they say, well, I'm not as successful as you. I don't have this huge, you know, enormous success that I can post about. But here's the funny thing. As soon as you get to that level of success that you wanted to achieve, you can't talk about it anymore because nobody relates to you. <laughs> the thing that people relate to about coaching are the small things, the extra money, the um, helping people every single day, feeling excited to wake up, feeling excited to connect with other women who are like you, feeling like you own something again as a mom, as a wife, as a woman, feeling like you're giving something back to society. Those are the, the very valuable posts about coaching, not the, I paid off $200,000 worth of debt. People see that and they think, well, that's cool for her, but that could never be true for me. 
we live in a society that teaches you not to dream big unless your parents taught you otherwise. We are literally beat down every single day to a pulp saying we have to work for somebody else. You cannot have that success. People who have that success are wrong. It's a scam. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. This is the mindset that people are getting berated with every day. So when they come on Facebook and see these huge grandiose things, they automatically turn it off. So don't undercut yourself. The successes that are the most important are the small ones, the ones that are attainable to people, the ones that speak to their questions right now. Yes, when they get involved in the business and push further, they need those bigger visions and goals. But initially on your public Facebook page, the most valuable stuff is going to be the small stuff, just like Raina said. Um, I think that's all that I have. So if you guys want to open it up for questions or whatever. Yeah, we can do that. Um, most of them I think have already been answered. Somebody talked about having their uh, full-time job and posting. Uh, Bonnie does not schedule her posts. <laughs> um, let me just read through some really fast and I'll say them out loud. I also want, I don't know if I said this, but I wanted to talk really quick about um, kind of the language that you use on your public pages. You know, coaching is really confusing for prospects. People have no idea what the word coach means. When everybody thinks Beachbody coach, they think that you're literally going to people's houses, personal training them, or they have to know everything there is to know about fitness. Or, you know, they have, I get people who say all the time, do I have to have a beach body to be a coach? Like, this is a foreign concept to people. So you need to dumb down. It is the smartest thing you can do to dumb down your language and dumb down the business for people on your, on your public page. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to understand and see themselves in your shoes. Itemize out what a coach is. Itemize out that you don't have to know anything. You don't need to be super fit. It's about the journey. Tell people and form your audience about these things before they even ask you the questions, before you even talk to them. You want to have the answers to those things and the really, really simple language on how to do those things on your social media. For example, I think it is the dumbest move of YouTube to completely switch everything to this new encoder thing for these live videos, yes. right? They have done such a poor marketing job of advertising it, of telling people about it, of explaining it. And now the result of that, everybody's moving from platforms, even though it's the best thing ever. You have to dumb things down for people to make them want to engage in something, to make it easy for them to understand. We live in a society, like I talked about the Snapchat society, we live in a society where if things aren't simple or easy to understand, people are out, right? Because everybody's tired, everybody's busy, everybody has a million things going on. They want to easily understand something and make a connection or else their attention span is gone. So remember to make things while you're doing these posts publicly, make things simple, make it easy for them to understand, make the objections easy to combat. A hundred percent. And that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> um, can you share how you find people outside of your challenge group to invite to coaching? I would say attraction marketing, just be who you want to sign on. Bonnie, anybody, anything? I would Dis respectfully disagree with me. <laughs> um, attraction marketing has never worked for me. I can never sit back and people just come to me. And that's just me being like 100% honest. I've never not privately invited or privately reached out to people. Um, Let me rephrase then because I haven't either. I think I obviously reach out to people. I'm not that coach that sits back and like has hundreds of people coming in. It's from posting. Yeah sharing and inviting from there. But again, being present, being open and being vulnerable, I think is ridiculously important. Yeah. Like you'll never, like, I think you'll never attract a coach that's better than you. So if you're not posting like the person you want to attract, I think that's attraction marketing. But as far as how I find people, I mean, it's old school, so nobody likes to do it anymore, but literally taking time to pour into people on social media, finding friends of friends who are similar to me, commenting on their stuff, adding them to a list, forming a relationship. You know, this business is really like, you see the fruits of your labor three to six months out from what you do. And a lot of people are too impatient to wait through that time. 
and that's why it never catches up with them, right? So if you do, if you friend three people every single day for the next six months and you comment on their stuff, you create a relationship, in six months, you'll be signing 15 to 20 new coaches every single month. I can almost guarantee it. But what happens a lot of the time is people get tired doing that for a month or two months and they say, well, whatever, this isn't working. I'm just going to stop doing that anymore. That's why not everybody is successful in this business because you have to have patience through the work time. And it's always a little bit longer than you expect it to be. But you start to see the fruits of that labor once you get past that hill. It's just like Gary Vaynerchuk said at Summit. You know, the majority of the reason why people won't be successful in this business is a lack of patience. And I can say that I've had a lack of patience. I can say that, you know, I want you to think about your business for a second. Somebody said this to me the other day and I almost like passed out in my chair. They were like, two, two analogies that I'll give you and then I'll be done talking because I talked too much. But think about your business like a regular franchise. Like let's just say you opened a Dunkin' Donuts and it took $1.5 million of liquidable assets for you to do so. $1.5 million, okay? We started this business for 40. <laughs> Think about the work that you put in now. If you had put $1.5 million into this business, would you be working the same? Would you be putting in the same amount of effort? If anybody says yes, you crazy, get off. <laughs> because I know for a fact that if I put $1.5 million into this business, I'd be working a crap ton harder than I ever did because that would be a make or break situation, right? It would have to work or else. And I think a lot of people get in this business and they think, Oh, well, you know, it was only 40 bucks or it was only a workout program and Shakeology. So I'll just see where I am in six months. And if it doesn't work, you know, I have this other thing or I have this backdoor option. You know, they put like one foot in and one foot out. And that's a lot of the times why it doesn't work. Because as soon as it gets frustrating or as soon as it gets a little bit hard mentally, because this business is all about what's up here. It has nothing to do with anything else. They, they dip out and they take that backdoor option. And it's that three to six months consistency. So when I find people, every time I reach out to them, I know that I'm not expecting a sale. All the people that sign up with me every single month are from the previous months. Like no one ever contacts me and then signs up right away. You have to put in work to sign people up. And that's just, you need to show them that you're real, that the opportunity is real, that the business is real, that you're a person, that you've overcome things. That's just how life works, you know? And you have to build that trust, and the trust is the part that takes a long time. Finding people is easy, but gaining collateral with them and being consistent, that's the hard part, and that's the part that nobody wants to hear. I see everybody kind of looking away from the screen right now <laughs> because everybody wants to hear from me Here's the magic pill. Here's where you find people. There's this group that says find new beach body coaches here and you just sign into it and then you find all the coaches, right? Everybody wants to hear that. But the shitty part is, is that's not the case. The case is finding people is easy. It's doing the work after that. That's hard. And you hear, you've heard before, <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> you've heard before that, you know, most people close in the fifth to 12th follow up. Like that again is where most people feel too. They're not willing to stay consistent with people and, and keep inviting people, even if maybe this month they can't, you know, if they can't this month, invite the next. If they can't that month, invite the next. Being consistent with following up, I think is crucial. And to defend my attraction marketing approach, I also <laughs> want to say that I find a lot of people in groups. So I literally, if you go to my Instagram, I have like a list of five things about me. And I also write down a list of five different things, characteristics about me. And so I will go to those groups. Like I'm in a shit ton of Colorado hiking groups. I'm in groups with people with tattoos. I'm in groups with people who have multi poos. I'm in groups with all kinds of different things that are characteristics of me. And I'm in there, I'm adding people from those groups. And by posting about me and my life and my journey, I'm catching the attention of those people who are interested in multi puppies or interested in hiking or interested in being active or have to do and that kind of thing. So make a list of things about you, of characteristics, of things that you're passionate about, whether it's knitting or hiking or puppies or whatever the case may be, and post about those things in your daily posts and you're going to attract the same kind of people. 
So now and that's old school too. And that's why a lot of people don't want to do that either because that takes a long time for yes. people to find you in a group and then feel connected enough with you to reach out about fitness because yeah. that's such a personal thing. So people really have to feel like you're going to be there for them. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, then this isn't a quick business, you guys, it, like she said, it takes months to build up a solid foundation. I mean, years, honestly, to build up a solid foundation in this business. And so if you're not willing to be in it for the long term, then you have to be willing to not have long term results. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel you, girl. You feel me? Can you go back to Bora Bora now? <laughs> Um, when recruiting, are you messaging people directly or do call to actions or both? Both. Um, so like I, I, like I said, I, there's nothing I ever post that's not about coaching. Yeah. Um, exactly. I mean, very rarely, like I just posted about a fire that's happening like 20 feet from my house, but that's just something that's going on with me. That's shows people that I'm a normal person and lets them know that things happen in my life too. I think that everything you post on social media should have a purpose behind it. Like nothing. I see coaches all the time posting, got my shake in, got my workout in, which is great. But why? Every post that you post should answer a question. Why did you get your workout in? Why do you feel like that shake's important? Why does that shake add value to your life? Everything you post shouldn't be just a one-off. Oh, great. You know, so-and-so's actually got her shake in. Awesome. I didn't. I feel bad about myself. You know, give people an answer in every single post. And then privately, every connection that I do initially, unless it's an application that was filled out, that's different. But, um, and if you do that, don't feel bad, Megan. It's like a comment. Um, but every message that I send is, is connecting first. Like I, I don't really message people that I've never talked to in my life and say, hey, would you like to be a Beachbody coach? Like that's just, wouldn't be me. Um, so I make sure I build a relationship first with everybody. And then once you get that engine going, like Raina just said, it takes years and this is a long-term business. But once you get that engine going, it is hard to stop. The momentum train is a hard thing to get started, but it's a hard thing to stop. So once you've been doing that, all of a sudden those people turn over month after month and you have people coming back to you who you've talked to six months ago and things get a lot easier because you've built that, not because you have it easy or not because you've been a coach for a certain amount of time, but because you've put that work in and you see that example with top coaches. Now, you know, some people say, Oh, I, you know, I hit success club 30 every month still. And that's because they put the momentum train in, but then there's some people who are struggling and they didn't put the momentum train in. So you just have to realize that. And then I saw another question um, that I had wanted to answer. Oh, when do you stop following up? I never stop following up with anybody. So like that notebook that I talked about that I have, I have the same names on those lists all the time. Unless somebody's like, you're a creep, please stop talking to me. There's never anybody that I stop following up with. I know for a fact that everybody has to be in the right mindset to join this business. Um, if they don't reply, you can just simply say something like, hey girl, I see that you felt like you couldn't reply to me. I'm sorry you felt like that. Uh, but this is what I do for my full-time living. So could you maybe tell me what I said wrong so I could help some more people or what you didn't like about the opportunity? What that does is just takes pressure off of them. So you're no longer asking them to join. You're just saying, Hey, what did I say wrong? You know, let me get better for the next conversation so I could actually help somebody else. You know, I'm still learning and growing as a coach. That is as transparent as you can be. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. The worst thing that anybody can do is say no. Imagine, um, I was watching this network marketing video and he said, what if somebody came up to you and said, Hey, do you want to play a game of blackjack? And I'm not a gambler. So I would initially say no. And then he said, what if someone told you, do you want to play a game of blackjack? And if you lose, you lose nothing. But if you win, you win double whatever money you have in your pocket. And I thought, this is the dumbest question ever. Of course I would play that game. And he said, that's like network marketing. Every time you invite someone, you lose nothing. Whenever someone says no, they're not saying no to you, to the person you are, to what you look like, to what you're saying. They're saying no to themselves. But if you win, 
you could win a top 10 coach, a best friend, uh, somebody to run this business with. You could change someone's life. The possibilities are endless. So every single day you guys are playing with a full hand of blackjack that you can't lose at. Like there's no downside, but you could win. I love that analogy. Love it, love it, love it. If I want, I'm going to take like two more. We're going to go till one hour. Okay. So another question, if I want to really grow my business, how many hours a day should I be working? You want to go first? <laughs> I think it's honestly, I think it's different for everybody. Um, like examples, Bonnie and I have two completely different lives, right? Completely different lives. I have 80 kids. <laughs> I only have two and a husband who's like a child. <laughs> so I technically have three kids and two dogs, but you know, like school and activity. I mean, there, everybody's schedule is going to be different. Everybody's schedule is going to be different, but I was talking to somebody and he said, when are you at your best? When can you sit down and just work without interruption, without, you know, being distraction, having distractions without any of that? When are you at your best? And that is what I had to answer to really just create a good schedule for myself. I think that whether you work full time or you have a hundred kids or you are, you know, just you're living the, whatever life you have to stick to a schedule and you have to figure out what schedule works best for you. So for me personally, as a new coach and a coach now, they're totally different, right? As a new coach, I was, I worked from home. I had like a, I made scarves and stuff like that. It was crazy, but it was very time consuming. And I had a kid at school in kindergarten and I had a child home with me. And so I was up early and I did my workout and then I took my kids to school. And then I had like literally two hours to work the business before having to get my other child from school because she did half days and then I had two kids home and then my husband was home and I had to do dinner and then I had to do laundry and clean the house and all these different things, right? But then I would work as soon as they went to bed and I would stay up for a couple hours at night and watch videos, watch Scotty Hobbs videos. And I just did everything at night. I stayed up early and I woke or stayed up late and I woke up early for a good year and a half for two years before I really figured out what worked for me and my schedule. Um, but I think having those, that sacrifice, being able to wake up early and being able to stay up late, I think is crucial as a new coach because you're not going to have time to work this business unless you're just home full time. You're going to have to make time. You're going to have to schedule it every single day or it's not going to happen. Like now for me, I work a little bit during the day. I have my assistant here during the day. And so we, I make graphics and things like that, but I do my best at night. So I sit down at eight o'clock at night when my kids are in bed and I usually work till midnight with a glass of wine in my hand. <laughs> so find what works for you. I think it's different for everybody. As long as you're getting it done, I think that's the most important part. Bonnie? I think this is, I think this is the hardest question to answer in this business. Whenever someone asks me this, I hesitate because it, I could tell you how many hours I worked in the beginning and how many hours I work now, but it doesn't matter to your life because like Raina said, everybody's home life and every, all the time that everybody has to put in is completely different. And that's why comparison will kill you in this business. Because if Raina compared herself to me or if I compare myself to Raina, it would, it would destroy us. You have to find out, the, first of all, you need to define the type of success that you want in this business, right? So what does success look like for you? Does it look like top 10 coach? Does it look like making $5,000 a week? Or does it look like making an extra $500 a month for your family and doing this in your spare time? You have to define what you want before you can define how many hours you work. If you want success like I have had in the beginning, I, I put in every waking moment that I had while I was not working, I was working the business. But you have to understand that I didn't, I don't have kids. I have a husband who is in the military who is gone for 13 hours a day. So I'm literally here with just two dogs by myself all day long. So of course I have tons of time to work the business. So a lot of the pitfall that people fall into is like comparing themselves to that, but they have three kids and a job and you know, other priorities. So first I would say define what you want. And then backtrack the amount of time that you have to put into that. Because who am I to success is different to everybody. And they each take different amount of time. 
Um, and I saw somebody say quantity over or quality over quantity, which is exactly right. So I feel like I got a lot more done when I had a full-time job <laughs> than when I quit and was working coaching full-time because I had all these hours in the day and too much time on my hands and not enough focus. So if you can find a good two hour chunk of time where you're just really, really focused and head down, then that's enough time, I think, for you. I agree 110%. So anything else you want to add before we let these fancy people go? Just one last thing that I would leave you guys with. Um, and it kind of goes along the lines with what I just said, but um, because I just saw a comment that said, I wish I had started coaching before twins and I was working full time. How do I say this? <laughs> I, <laughs> I know that life is hard and life is busy and everybody has priorities, but this is why few people will be successful in this business. You have to be willing to do now what most people will not sacrifice. Like in the first two years of my business, I slept none, <laughs> like literally no sleep. Um, and that was a sacrifice that I made. And I had a conversation with my husband and with my family and with my friends, you know, I'm not going to be communicating a lot. I'm going to be really working on this business, but it has given me so much in return and I wouldn't change a second of it. And I think that the hardest part in this business, because it is not a, it is not a regular job where you have a boss to blame or an industry to blame or somebody else to put it on all of a sudden we as humans, we blame it on the things that we can't control, right? Like the amount of kids we have or the amount of jobs we have or the amount of debt we have. And I definitely fell into that pitfall a lot in the beginning. You have to get behind that and know that whatever it is, is an excuse, right? And I don't say that to be unkind and I don't say that to be harsh, but I do say it to give you power. Like there is no one in this business who hasn't, hasn't overcome something. There is no one who is famous, who has changed the world, who has made any kind of impact for their family or has overcome a great deal without having all of those distractions and all of those excuses and all of those things in their life that pull focus. No one in this business who is successful will get on a call with you and tell you that it was super easy. I can tell you that right now. Everybody has babies, everybody has tragedy, everybody has things that are wrong. But the difference is you find a way around it and you find a way to look forward. And it will do no good saying, oh, I wish I did this or I wish I had that because that will only stop you in your tracks. All of you are capable. Everyone is capable of recruiting 15 to 20 coaches. I don't care what your life looks like. I know you are if you put your head down and focus. So have, have faith in that and let that be a happy thing for you. There are people in this business that are busier than you doing more than you in this business. 110%. All right. I think mics have been dropped. We are done <laughs> with this training. Um, if you guys do have questions, feel free to comment um, on the recording. I will post the recording in the EA group and feel free to just comment below if you guys have questions about any of it and I'll try to go through some today. But Bonnie, thank you for joining us and hopping on and sharing your words of wisdom. I could literally listen to you talk all day long and I'm sure everyone else feels the same way. So um, I'll let everybody go and you guys I feel have... the same way about you, friends. Oh, love you. Everybody have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.